This video introduces you to the idea of unit conversions. Now this is a topic that a lot of students struggle with, especially in science and in math. Um, so if you're struggling with this idea, you're not alone. Um, and one example of, of what I mean by unit conversions is converting from like miles per hour into feet per second is a really common example of this kind of problem that we're looking at today. So the first thing that you need to understand before we jump into unit conversions are some, some underlying ideas um, that I want you to be aware of. The first is the idea of cross-canceling. When we are multiplying fractions, we typically multiply the tops together and the bottoms together. So 1 times 2 is 2, and 2 times 3 is 6. Now, the fraction 2 sixths can be simplified because there's a 2 in the top and the bottom. So I can cancel this, dividing both top and bottom by 2, and get 1 third, or 1 third. Okay? Now, the idea of cross-canceling is before I multiply... If I find common factors, I can cancel those diagonally. Okay, for example, here, I see a 2 here and a 2 here, so I can cancel that before I multiply and make it 1 over 1, okay? And then I will multiply the tops together and the bottoms together and get 1 third, okay? The idea of cross-canceling is really important as we're looking at unit conversions. The next idea to talk about before we talk about unit conversions is about the idea of multiplying by one. Okay, So I have the fraction one half and I'm multiplying it by three over three which is one. So this right here is equal to one. Okay, So if I multiply these fractions together, again the tops together, I get three. The bottoms together, I get six. Okay, And yes, I can simplify this, but my point is to show you that um, that this fraction right here, 1 half, is the same as this fraction right here, 3 sixths, because I've multiplied by 1. Okay? Whenever you multiply a number by 1, the fraction doesn't change. Okay? Again, uh, this is equal to 5 over 10, and 1 half is the same as 5 over 10. Okay? So multiplying by 1 keeps it to be the same number. Now let's jump into some unit conversion problems. The first one we'll look at is converting from dollars per pound into cents per ounce. Okay, So I'm going to use the ideas of cross-canceling and the idea of multiplying by 1 to solve these problems. Okay, I'm going to first convert the dollars into cents. Now I want them to cancel. So the fact that this is in the, in the numerator, um, I'm going to multiply it by $1 in the bottom so that these, will, these units will cancel. Okay, and how many cents are in one dollar? Well, there's a hundred cents. Okay, hundred cents in a dollar. So that this will cancel. The dollar will cancel with this dollar, and then I'm uh, I'm left with cents per pound. Okay, next I will convert uh, pounds into ounces. Now, because the pounds are on the bottom, I multiply it times pounds on the top. So one pound is how many ounces? It is 16 ounces. Okay, so now these pounds will cancel with these pounds, and looking at just the units, um, I have cents, cents over ounces left, which is what I wanted. Okay, the last thing to do is multiply these fractions. I multiply all the tops together. So 7 times 100 is 700 over 20 times 16. is 320. Okay. Now simplifying this fraction, I'll cancel this zero with this zero. That's pretty easy. Now 72 out of 32. Simplifies to be 35 over 16 because there's a 2 in the top and the bottom. Okay. So the answer is 35 over 16 cents per ounce. Now if you want that as a decimal, it is 2.19. Um, I'll say it um, with as a decimal because we're dealing with money. So um, 2.19 is cents per ounce. 2.19 cents per ounce. Okay. 
The next problem we'll look at is converting from euros into pesos. Okay? Now, there isn't a fraction for 17 euros, so I'll think about it being divided by 1, and I will again use the ideas of cross-canceling and the ideas of multiplying by 1 to convert this from euros into pesos. Okay? I'm going to multiply this times euros on the bottom. Now, I've looked up the fact that, um, let's see here, that 1 euro is a dollar thirty. At least it was the information I have here. Okay. Um, now I've converted from euros into dollars. I now need to go from dollars into pesos. So I'll multiply this. Now I have dollars on the top, so I'll put dollars on the bottom, and I know that a zero point zero eight, so eight cents, is one peso. Okay, so again, the, the dollar will cancel with this dollar, and I'm left with just pesos. Okay, so once I have the, the units I want, I then multiply the, the top together, and I have 17 times 130, which is 22.10. That's divided by point, um, 0 0.08. Now to get a better decimal, I'm going to divide those together. So 22.10 divided by 0 0.08 is 276.25, okay? And that's how many pesos there are. If I had more room, I'd write pesos. Okay, very similar with simplifying fractions. Uh, make sure you put it over one to begin with so you have a fraction to work with, and then you can cross-cancel. Okay, the last problem we'll look at is converting from miles per hour into feet per second. And the ideas of cross-canceling and about multiplying by one um, will still be used here. So I'll start off with converting from miles into feet. Okay, so I have miles on top, and so miles will go on the bottom. So one mile is 5,280 feet. That's a good one to have memorized. It shows up quite a bit. Okay, so miles will cancel with these miles and I need to convert from hours into seconds. Now, most people don't know off the top of their head how many seconds are in an hour, okay? Uh, if you do this quite a bit, if you do, use it a lot in science, you will, you know, memorize that, but um, <clears throat> hours are on bottom, and so hours goes on top, so one hour is 60 minutes, okay? So hours will cancel with hours, and then I have minutes on the bottom, so I need to multiply minutes on the top, so one minute, is 60 seconds. Minutes will cancel with minutes, and all I'm left with is feet is feet per second, which is what I want. Okay? So I simply multiply all the top together. So 60 times 5,280 is 316800, so 316,800. Multiply the bottom together, and I get 60 times 60, which is 3,600. These zeros cancel, that's nice. And then I have to deal with, I'll just divide this, um, 3,168 divided by 36, and I get 88. Okay, so the answer is 88 feet per second. I'm kind of out of space. Okay, hopefully this helped um, you understand the ideas of unit conversions, of converting from one unit to the other, using the ideas of cross-canceling and the idea of multiplying by one, not to change what that number is equal to.